Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of The Wire, the week in real estate for 2020. Hope everyone had a safe and happy Christmas and New Year and of course we're wishing all our followers and clients all the best for a great year ahead. So look, let's get into it. So this week on The Wire, first home buyer scheme launches, positive outlook for 2020 and housing shortage looms. G'day guys, my name is Tim Guest, I'm Australia's leading financial educator and the founder of Infinite Wealth and welcome to The Wire, the week in real estate where you can get all the top stories happening this week in finance, real estate, investment and more. Now please like, comment and share this video and if it's your first time tuning in, welcome along. Glad to uh, have some new people here for the start of the year and, and don't forget to follow or subscribe wherever you're seeing this. So let's get stuck into our top story for this week. First home buyer scheme launches. So the federal government's new first home buyer scheme officially launched on the 1st of January, making it easier for young buyers to get finance for their first home. Now under the scheme, the federal government will go guarantor on 10,000 loans to first time buyers each financial year. Those with deposits between 5% and 20% of the purchase price will avoid paying the cost of lender's mortgage insurance, which is usually around about $10,000. Now, Aaron Scully, finance manager at Infinite Finance, says first home buyers need to weigh up the pros and cons so it doesn't cost them more in the long run. As an example, a person buying a $500,000 property with a 5% deposit instead of a 20% deposit would need $75,000 less initially, but with a larger loan, their monthly mortgage repayments would be $329 extra a month, and they would pay almost $45,000 more in interest over the same 30-year period. Now this is based on CBA's basic principal and interest home loan at a rate of 3.32%, and that's for an owner-occupier. Now to find out if you're eligible and what your options are with regards to the first home buyer uh, scheme, please either comment on the post below or direct message us or on one of our social media platforms or even the, the website and uh, we can help you out. So let's get into our next story. So latest survey indicates positive outlook for 2020. So housing markets look promising for growth in 2020 with over half of ex experts expecting house prices to rise above their pre-decline levels. And that's according to the latest survey by comparison website Finder. Only 12% of experts expected house prices to fall. So another positive aspect is that home buyers can look forward to the possibility of further interest rate decreases with the Reserve Bank reassessing the economic outlook at its first meeting of 2020. And this leaves some market economists to conclude that they may cut interest rates as soon as February. Now the Finder survey also indicates that mortgage defaults should remain steady with current mortgage delinquencies remaining low at around 1.6%, that's according to Moody's. Three quarters of the expert survey said it's unlikely we'll see a rise in defaults in the year ahead. Now most of the economists surveyed also said the most promising locations to buy property in 2020 include Brisbane and Melbourne. And now for our final story of the week, housing shortage looms, and this is according to ANZ. So a supply shortage is set to put pressure on house prices in 2020. Uh, the ANZ Bank says that as the lag between interest rate cuts and building approvals grows longer, residential construction activity is set to fall further, adding to the prospect of a housing shortage. According to senior economist Felicity Emmett, the current trend with dwelling approvals suggests that construction will continue falling in the first half of the year and will not pick up until mid-2020. The latest figures from SQM Research show that most major markets across Australia already have vacancy rates below 2.5%. Now Emmett says vacancy rates will fall further in 2020 and 2021 with Sydney the only major market with areas of oversupply. We expect the vacancy rate to tighten further with this putting upward pressure on rents and eventually prompting a bigger price and uh, supply response. It's coming from Emmett. Population growth is driving further demand as supply declines, the ANZ analysis says, but there's little sign as yet that higher prices for established homes are driving a pickup in construction. Well guys, that's pretty much it from me this week. Uh, well, for The Wire anyway. Now remember to like, comment, and share this video, and don't forget to follow or subscribe wherever you're seeing this. Also, don't forget to stay tuned later in the week for our next Just Ask Tim video series, the first for the year. And if you wanna submit a question or there's a topic you'd like me to discuss in more detail, there's the link in the post to do that. Apart from that, guys, have a great week, and remember, there's only one thing in life that makes a difference, and that's action. See ya.